Welcome into Payoff Pitch, Action Network's Major League Baseball betting podcast. We are presented by BetMGM, Brendan Glasheen, on this Friday morning, joined by BJ Cunningham and Mike Ionello for Friday Best Bets. It is June 7th. You can hear Best Bets every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday during the regular season. So subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts, and you can also find us over on the Action Network YouTube page. Uh, we are here Friday morning. It is not the night before. We are coming to you uh, Friday morning, some scheduling conflicts. Uh, so we are doing this in the morning, day of the slate, 14 gamer on this Friday. So maybe a little more available for the guys here as we dive in. Uh, we'll start with best bets, work our way through the card like we normally do. We the public, underdogs, and some final bets, and we'll get you out of here uh, for the weekend. BJ, why don't you go first? What do you got for a best bet today? Giants, Rangers, over eight runs at minus 105. We have what I believe two negative regression candidates coming up here. Logan Webb, his metrics are very interesting because he has about a 2.95 ERA, a 3.13 XFIP, but a 4.77 expected ERA. And the reasoning for that is, is because he's mainly a, he's a big time ground ball pitcher, right? His main two pitches are a sinker and a changeup. Those two pitches are actually getting hit pretty hard. In fact, his ground ball rate is actually down 6%, and it hasn't really translated to be him being more of a fly ball pitcher. Those ground balls are turning into line drives. So his uh, the expected weighted on base average allowed on his changeup and sinker are both over 350. So he's somebody that's going to regress at some point. He's facing a Rangers lineup that is in their split advantage. They're much, much better against right-handed pitching than they are against lefties. And Webb is somebody who historically over his career has pitched much better at home than he has on the road, obviously pitching in one of the most pitcher friendly parks in baseball in San Francisco. His XFIP is about a half run higher away from home than it is at home. <clears throat> Michael Lorenzen, uh, he's having a little bit of control issues. He's got one of the highest walk rates in baseball. He's another negative regression candidate, 2.96 ERA expected ERA closer to 4.2. If you look through his pitch mix, he basically throws a fastball and a sinker as his main two pitches. His fastball has been okay. His sinker is getting absolutely obliterated. And if you look through the Giants lineup, they're actually much better hitting fastballs and sinkers than any type of off-speed pitches. In addition to that, the Rangers bullpen is near the bottom in baseball in terms of XFIP. So I think this total is a little too low. It depends also if they decide to close the roof at Globe Life Park. Mm -hmm. If they don't, well, it's going to be 88 degrees and the wind's going to be blowing out 12 miles an hour to left field. If they do, it obviously creates a more pitcher-friendly run environment. But at a total of eight, I think it's far too low for two starting pitchers that have uh, pretty severe uh, deltas between their actual ERA and their expected ERA. Okay, very good. Good stuff. Uh, Rangers and Giants over. Mike Guyanella, welcome back to the show. Uh, what do you have for us today for a best Thanks, break? guys. Glad to be back. Hopefully... Uh... This time will go better than I did last time. Uh, but I'm taking the Mariners, uh, minus 120, small favorites against the Royals. I think you could ask four people who the best pitcher on the Mariners are is, and you might get four different answers. I mean, Castillo leads them in ERA. Kirby leads them in XFIP. But Bryce Miller has the best whip and the best strikeout rate. Uh, he had a splitter to his arsenal this offseason. That's something that, you know, Logan Gilbert and Kirby both use a lot. Um, but Miller's split is super unique and opponents are hitting just 156 against it with a 34.8 strikeout rate. What makes his splitter so like unhittable and, and unique is it, it moves in three different ways. He kind of says he doesn't completely know why or what it just kind of does it on its own. Um, but he's thrown a splitter that has run as much as 16 inches dropped as much as 50 inches and cut sometimes as much as four inches. He says he has no idea why it cuts sometimes it just does. <laughs> He has the widest range of break on a strikeout with the same pitch for any pitch that wasn't a knuckleball this season. So you, the Lord knows where this splitter is going, but it's been nasty. And then Kansas City will Kansas City will start Daniel Lynch, who started the season in AAA. He's been sent up and down three times this year. He's you know he's a minor league pitcher. He's made just two starts all season. He's allowed a fourteen percent barrel rate. So. I'm not really afraid of him. Seattle's offense has been pretty disappointing this year, especially Julio, but they will be in their better splits here. They're 17th in WRC plus against left-handed pitchers. 
where Kansas City will be in their worst splits. They're 15th against lefties. So while Kansas City does have the better offense, I think they're closer in this matchup than than on paper. And Kansas City has the worst bullpen in the league. They're dead last in reliever XFIP. They're terrible. So I brought out my Chris Flexen Mariners shirt just for the occasion. I'll take Miller in the Mariners against a minor league pitcher and this bullpen behind him. All right. I mean, I, look, I, I think the uh, we've talked about the Royals quite a bit. Uh, Tanner McGrath calls him uh, Cole Hamels, Garrett, Reagan. Cole Reagans. I forget how he words it, but um, outside of him, they can hit. Their offense is fun, but man, that bullpen is uh, it's kind of a, kind of a mess. Shout out to Tanner. He Tanner's the one that bought me this Flexen shirt after Flexen's twenty twenty one season basically paid for my wedding. So <laughs> nice. Shout out Chris Flexen. Okay. Uh, which it's a pretty good series though. I mean, Royals and Mariners are both contending right now for their respective divisions and for the wild card. Let's go to uh, fade the public here. Um, the White Sox are favored in a game tonight. <laughs> how is how is that? They are fifteen and forty eight with a minus one hundred and fifty two run differential. They are playing the Red Sox at home. 56% of the bets and 91% of the cash on Boston, however, though. So the people are looking at this line thinking, well, we get a, basically an even money price on the Red Sox with Cooper Criswell on the mound against Garrett Crochet. Seems too easy, BJ. Are you right? Are the people right? The Red Sox? Our Red Sox? They're on the Red Sox. The people. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be the square and take the Red Sox. Um, so here's the thing. Um Crochet has been awesome. Like there's really nothing I can say negative about him. He's a, he's got a 2.1 night expected ERA. His stuff plus numbers are incredible. The Red Sox are, you know, average to below average against left-handed pitching. So from a pure, just like pitcher versus offense matchup, like it's not the best one for the Red Sox, mm. but the flip side of it is, it's like, okay, the White Sox have the second worst bullpen in baseball behind the Royals. They're the worst defensive team. They're the worst offensive team. They've lost 15 straight games. And it's not like they're facing some 38-year-old has-been on the mound. Like, Cooper Criswell is, is a very good pitcher. He's got a three-and-a-half expected ERA. His stuff plus numbers on all of his off pitches are really, really good. So, I don't really understand it. Like, I have, I mean, I have the Red Sox projected at minus 123, which I thought was, you know, a little low looking into this. But, obviously, Crochet is a very good starting pitcher. Um, so, with a bad bullpen, a bad offense, and a bad defense, like the second that Crochet comes out of this, the Red Sox have ma- massive advantages. So, I like them at minus 105. I get why they're pricing this line the way that it is because of how good Crochet has been this season. But at some level, you have to look at everything else and say, hey, hold on. There's no defense behind him and they can't hit. And then the second he comes out, they're just going to give up a ton of runs. So, I guess I'll just be a square and take the Red Sox. Okay. All right, Mike, uh, 14 consecutive losses for the White Sox. Yeah, they have, they have one win in their last 19 games. So do the math. How many of those starts did Crochet – I mean, Crochet had to start three of the three games in there. Like, I, I, Crochet's great. He's not prime Pedro Martinez. I don't – White Sox <laughs> should not be favored against anybody unless, you know – Dallas Keuchel comes back and he's pitching for the Rockies, then, okay, no, then you can make the White Sox a favorite. But especially, you know, you mentioned it. Chris Wells is not a guy who's – he's not some horrible pitcher. He's got a three five two expected ERA. He's a junk guy. He generates a ton of ground balls. He doesn't allow walks. So he's not someone who's going to beat himself. You know, he's not going to just walk guys and give up a four-run homer. They're going to have to earn it, and they can't. Now there's rumors they're shopping Luis Robert. The Red Sox are 7-2 and two with – Criswell on the mound. So I just, I don't get it. I don't get this line at all. I got it at plus money last night. I'm with BJ at 125 range. Sounds about right. I there's the White Sox should not be favored against anyone. So I'm with the public for sure. They have lost. Uh, the White Sox have lost crochets last two starts. Um, 10 inning loss, six innings, five hits, one run, one walk, eight strikeouts. Pretty good. Yeah. If you go look at his game log, he's giving up like one or, or no runs in every single one of those stars. They right. lose. So I said to be ahead thing. of time, like if you think the White Sox are going to win, then like you're better off just betting like an all under or something. Cause if they win, they're going to win two nothing. Or yeah. If you really want to take the White Sox, just take them on the first five. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. just avoid the bullpen. Yeah, I mean that's the other part of it's, it. But right? that's the thing, like if people out there really want to, 
Right. I don't, I don't know if people really want to. It's not just you guys picking the Red Sox. It's like it's not a, it's not even attractive enough to bet the White Sox. Like take the Red Sox part out of it. It's like gross, gross line. Yeah. All right. Whatever. That's <laughs> all. I, yeah, just whatever. Okay. Uh, let's move on to underdogs for Friday slate. Again, we're talking June seventh, Friday slate around the Major League Baseball. Um, BJ, what do you got? Underdog. I got the Rockies for the first five innings at plus one fifty against the Cardinals and Lance Lynn. So the reason for first five here is because the Rockies have pitched three of their top four relievers over the last two days. So they have nobody in their bullpen. And I really, and quite frankly, St. Louis's bullpen is amazing and one of the top five uh, units in baseball. So massive disadvantages there. So I don't even want to deal with that. So we're just going to stick to the first five, not even really a fan of Austin Gomber. Uh, historically over his career have been about a four and a half to a five expected ERA type of pitcher, but the Cardinals are horrific against left-handed pitching. They're bottom three in baseball in terms of WRC plus. And if you go look at who is, you know, who do they have anybody in their lineup that potentially, you know, could hit left-handed pitching? Well, Wilson Contreras is the only guy and he has a broken arm right now. So he has like over a 450 weighted on base average. They just have nobody in the lineup that can actually hit left-handed pitching. And Lance Lynn's numbers, I mean, he's old. His numbers are showing it. I mean, he's well over a four expected ERA here. He's a heavy fastball type of pitcher, which is a pitch that the Rockies actually do hit well. The Rockies don't hit off-speed pitches at all, but they can hit fastballs. So, um, yeah, I like the price of plus 150. I'm not sure the Cardinals should be this high, especially against left-handed pitcher. Okay, excellent. We've got the Rockies and Mike for an underdog. Who jumps out to you? Yeah, I'm going to take Arizona plus 105. I'm just ready for another day losing money on Brandon Fott. It seems like I do every single time he starts. Uh, Arizona's 5-7 and seven in his starts this season. And he's the guy I feel like I'm just keep waiting for him to kind of take that next step. He's got a 4-3-2 ERA. He's given up four runs in consecutive starts, so obviously I'm going to bet on him. Uh He's got a 2.8 expected ERA this season. He's got elite command. He doesn't allow a ton of hard contact. Maybe this is just stuck in my head, but we we know what Fott's capable of after during last uh, year's postseason run. We saw him just mow down the Dodgers and Phillies in back-to-back starts. So I'm just super high on him. His, his fastball has actually been better than it was last season. I think he's just gotten really unlucky with his sweeper. If you look at his expected metrics, all of the expected metrics are lower than what he's actually been giving up with his sweeper. So. You know, Fott's underperformed his expected ERA by more than a run and a half. So I'm thinking that positive regression is coming. And then Michael King's overperformed his metrics a little bit. Most of his expected metrics grayed out about a league average pitcher, if not slightly below. You know, he's produced good strikeout numbers kind of throughout his career, but even that's a little down. But he's been wild with his command. He issues way too many walks. So I'm just way higher on Fott than I am on King. Offensively, these teams are fairly even i think they're they're 10th and 12th and weighted on base average san diego is much better against righties so i'll probably give them the edge on offense but i still like five more than i do king so i'm going to continue betting on his positive regression coming and for what it's worth these two pitchers faced off against each other a month ago and the padres won 13 to 1 so what could possibly go wrong taking the snakes here with brandon fought on the hill Padres have lost to five in a row. That was a game that came down to the wire last night. That's series opener, Padres. I think Arizona's just deeper. Like, you know, obviously the Padres have, you know, Tatis and the big names, but I just, I like what Arizona yeah. has more. You just, they, they got to get Corbin Carroll going. They got to get some of those guys going, but I think they have more talent top to bottom than the Padres do. Yeah. I mean, the NL wild card is going to be a mess again. And in, in I mean that in the best way possible. Um, <laughs> you, you can eliminate the Rockies and the Marlins. Everyone else is in it. The Nationals and Mets are in it. Eight games under 500. Uh, it's, Nationals are ahead of the Mets. <laughs> it's nuts. All right. Yeah, that should be something. And, and maybe that reminds us, the D-backs remind us, like someone can come out of there and make a run if they get the pitching. So we'll see. Um, that's for, down the road. A uh, couple more. Uh, B, BJ, I think you want to you want to echo the sentiments of Mike on the D-backs just for the first five, though. Yeah, absolutely. I like I like the D-backs for the first five, just echoing everything Mike said about Fott and his positive regression. The other bet that I like uh, is the Twins, both for the first five and for the full game against the Pirates. 
Um, hurts me to go against my good friend Mitch Keller. I'm gonna say um, Iowa on Iowa crime. I know here. this is this hurt this hurts me to do it, but he's been overperforming a little bit. He's expected ERA to run higher than his actual ERA, and there's some concerning signs if you look at his pitch mix. You know, historically when he was struggling early on in his career, he was way too reliant on his fastball. He changed that last year. He started adding in more pitches, sinker, cutter. How, how helping him diversify away from that fastball. This season, he's back to his fastball usage is up 6%. The velocity on it is down almost a full mile, mile per hour. The stuff plus on his fastball has gone down from 100 to 90. So there's some little concerning signs here with, with, my, with my guy Mitch. And the Twins are a top five team in baseball and expected weight on base average against right-handed pitching. Joe Ryan's also been awesome this season, close to a three expected ERA. It's been domino with this fastball. Really good with a sweeper. Got a nasty split finger. And the Pirates are average to below average against right-handed pitching. So i um, not sure they should be this close to a pick here, even if it is on the road. All right. Mike, take us home. You got a couple of player props you like for today. Yeah, I've been on a big, you know, this season I feel like I've been on a big, the the hits plus runs plus RBI uh, bandwagon. So I, I kind of circled three guys I want to look look for today. Combination of come in good good form and also good hit history against the pitcher. Uh, Alex Bregman has gone over his hits, runs, RBI total in eight of his last 10 games, and he is six for 12 with a home run against Griffin Canning. So I like Bregman to go over one and a half hits, runs, RBI. Tyler Stevenson for the Reds, he's gone over in seven of his last 10. He's eight for 13 with a double and a home run against Justin Steele. Good matchup for him there. I kind of like Spencer Steer in that one as well, but I, I'd probably lean Stevenson. And then another one is Ryan Mountcastle has gone over. He's only gone over in five of his last 10, but he is six for nine with a double and two home runs against Aaron Savale. So Bregman, Stevenson, and Mountcastle are three player props I'm looking for on Friday. Okay, great. Uh, Quickly, because I should have said this off the top, um, quick question for both of you. And if you don't have thoughts, it's fine. Um, Phillies Mets in London tomorrow and Sunday. Um, Runs. Yeah, well, that's what I was. I wanted to ask about the run environment. What, what do you think? It's uh, it, you know, uh, stay tuned. I'm, I'm sure Zarilla will have something. Uh, yes. as far as the run environment, and, and that's, you mean Zarilla right. will have the Mets money line? He does every day. Yeah. Um. Very funny that Chase Hudley is the guy that's uh, like the promoter for it, given his history with uh, really. With yeah. The Mets. Well, at least yeah. on the Philly side. Yeah, he's on the Philly side, but uh, given his history with the Mets, yeah, it's very funny. Um, I actually saw something like the Mets like won't uh, post any like videos or anything involving Chase Utley like promoting the game. Which I well, did you see them? There was like a there's like a banner of like promoting the game that had like I forget who it was, but it had a Mets player that like hasn't been on the team in like two years. It had like Adam Adovino on it. It was like mm-hmm. they didn't have like Alonzo and Lindor. It was like two random relievers that haven't played there. <laughs> I also saw in the the store like they have an MLB pop up shop in London. Yeah. There's a there's a shirt that just has like Phillies and Mets logos all over oh, yeah, it. Like like wine yeah, I saw that. Which it's like, who's gonna buy that? Shirt? I guess uh, English people might buy it, but like, <laughs> who in the United States is buying that shirt? Maybe it's a joke. It'd be funny, but yeah, no. The run environment should be uh, crazy high. I, I'm not. Are they playing at the O2 or are they playing at Wembley? I can't. I can't remember uh, uh, which, London, which one they're playing London, at. London Stadium. London Stadium. Okay, I think that's the O2. Um, yep. So, or London Stadium, no, that's where West Ham plays. So, it's where they played the Olympics. Uh, so, yeah, the run environment last year was crazy high. I think well, the Cubs and uh, Cardinals were playing last year, I believe, if I'm not yes. mistaken. Yep. Um, but remember yeah, that? Remember really- the? Uh, remember a few years ago, there was that Yankees Red Sox series that was like 19 to 17. I'm like, if this is if you're from British Britain and you're, this is your first like baseball game watching you're like this is the greatest sport of all time <laughs> well they have cricket mike so you know they they see this type of stuff all the time <laughs> capacity yeah, I mean, yeah, like eight thousand people wow the that sunday over especially too because that's you got saturday makes me nervous because you got ranger suarez going maybe look for a phillies team total over but sunday you got quintana versus walker who have both been bad so that should be maybe you get lucky and like saturday is like a little bit underscoring so then you get maybe a little bit of a deflated number Sunday, and then with Quintana and Walker, that, that should go way over. Look, my opinion doesn't mean chicken bleep on this podcast, but something I'm thinking about already, and we I think we teased this last week. 
Keep an eye on the Phillies and the Mets coming back from London. The Phillies go to the Red Sox. They go to mm. Boston Tuesday. Uh, Nick Pavetta on the mound against Zach Wheeler. Maybe a chance to fade the Phillies? Maybe. 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 We'll see. Former friends of the podcast, I would love to see this team uh, just start losing. Start, start to <laughs> start. Mets, Mets play the Marlins on Tuesday. Yeah. Yep. So they might get lucky there. All right. Very good. So keep an eye out. Action Network app, uh, actionnetwork.com for any write-ups uh, London-related. I'm sure Sean Zarello will be on top of it, as well as our other contributors. Stay tuned in the app for picks as well for the London series. 110 first pitch on Saturday the 8th. That will do it for us. For BJ Cunningham, Mike Ionello, Brendan Glasheen, thanks for tuning in. Again, you can find us uh, over on the Action app. Um, also, wherever you get your podcasts, leave your five-star ratings and reviews. Uh, we'll do some giveaways uh, as the month of June unfolds. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel if you are watching us there. Uh, we greatly appreciate uh, the following over on the YouTube page. Thanks for tuning in to Payoff Pitch, Action Network's MLB betting podcast. We are presented by BetMGM. You all have a great weekend.